Hey folks, Alan Saunders with Pittsburgh Sports Now. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Pitt Panther Talk. I'm joined by Mike Vakovkin. Pitt Panther Talk is always sponsored by Buell Insurance Agency. And Mike, we've got a lot to talk about regarding the departure of perhaps one of Pitt's most talented player, Paris Ford, who decided uh, this week that he would not be continuing to play for Pitt this season, opting out of the final four games. Um, a a fairly monumental decision when it comes to both his future and to the future prospects of this Pitt football team, given that Ford was a potential All-American and one of the best uh, defensive backs in the country is one of the top safeties in the 2021 NFL draft. Mike, we talked with Paris Ford, the people close to him, and it seems like there's a lot of things that went into this decision, whether it was uh, COVID-19 uh but but what's your take on the whole picture here what what is the the big picture of this decision losing um i i don't believe that if pitt was i as i uh i think i wrote this earlier if pitt was five and two or six and one that this uh decision would have been made um i don't know that paris ford has been or is entirely happy with the situation that's going on with Pitt, with his relationship with the staff, uh, particularly the head coach. But I, I think he was willing to put up with it or deal with it for the team, uh, for his development, and he had another year to go. Once things started to go south in all regards, uh, you know, you can have COVID. Obviously, we it's the, the numbers are spiking around here. That could have played uh a part of the role but i think the bigger picture is losing um and i don't think there's any bottom line with that and i don't blame him uh or question him as some people have uh, i think some people mentioned the word quit you know you could say that what you want but uh it's a business colleges treat this as a business and when you have a when you're a prospect like paris ford i think you should also treating treat it as a business and that's what he's done here well, one of the people that didn't criticize Paris's decision was Pat Narduzzi when he talked with the media today. You know, he said, we respect his decision. He said it's a business decision, a family decision, and something that uh, Pitt has a lot of respect for. Uh, you know, I, I honestly think Pitt was fairly fortunate to have Paris Ford come back at all for this season. I wrote back in February that I thought that was maybe the best job, the best recruiting job Narduzzi has ever done to get Ford and, and initially Jalen Twyman and, and Patrick Jones to – agree to come back. They end up losing Twyman before the season. They lose Ford in the middle of the season. I still think on the whole, that's three or four really good players. You throw in DeMar Hamlin into that mix, who also didn't have to come back, that decided to come back to Pitt when they didn't have to. And yeah, I think the losing has has something to do with this, I, I would imagine. But, you know, I just think in general, um, Pitt was pretty fortunate to have those guys at all. Uh, and uh, Pat Narduzzi said he doesn't expect to have more opt-outs. I'm not sure you know, if, if if I'm Pat Jones, I'm not sure what more I feel like I have to prove at this point. Um, but we'll see. You know, it, it, it's tough. You kind of feel like the entire um, momentum has come out of this team right now between, yeah. you know, the, the losing and, and then losing Kenny Pickett to injury, obviously such an important player. And now this, man, it, it just feels like uh, what's the next bad thing that's going to happen? Yeah, and, and that's why I just have a hard time. I, I saw the stats that came out, and I, I guess Pitt is favored or expected to win three other last four games or, you know, have a good chance, whatever the, uh, you know, the numbers that these sites come out with, they expect them to. I just have a hard time believing that. I, I really do, want uh, Alan. Uh, number one with the quarterback situation, I, I don't – I'm going to be very surprised if uh, Kenny Pickett comes back. I don't care what's being said over there. Uh, I think this is a serious ankle injury and nothing against the quarterbacks that are in there now. But when you're struggling as bad as they are running the ball with an offensive line, when you don't have a quarterback uh, that's completely comfortable in there, they're just going to have a hard time scoring points. And then you, uh, and then you couple in losing and then just getting down, uh, you start losing three, four, five games in a row, man. It's hard to keep that team up. And they're going to be going against a Virginia Tech team that always plays them hard. 
Uh, I don't care if Florida State's who knows what they're going to get, but they're still playing at Florida State and on their roster, they still have higher rated recruits than Pitt, regardless of how they're performing. And the only the only game that I think Pitt has a really good chance to win is uh, Georgia Tech. And then obviously we know they're not going to beat Clemson. So uh, I don't know. I, I just have a hard time. Uh, Pat Narduzzi is going to have, and his staff are going to have to do a heck of a job keeping these kids' heads in the game. But I guess some of them are, some of the young kids are going to be getting opportunities like Brandon Hill right now. So this is a showcase for him. This is important for him. This is important for uh, some guys like Marquez Williams. So it's not all completely lost, but some, some of the veterans on the team, uh, I think he's going to have a hard time uh, or it's going to be a challenge to keep their heads in the game here. Yeah, I actually think when it comes down to it, replacing Paris Ford on the field might be the easiest part of all that. Um, you know, you lose a guy who was a, a well-liked member of the locker room, uh, sort of an emotional leader of the team. Uh, I think that's going to deflate people's spirits, but I really like Brandon Hill as a football player. You know, I, I think he's a really talented, he's young. He's going to make some mistakes as he grows into the role, even as, as Paris Ford did when he took over. But I think he's a really talented football player, and I think he's going to be a really, really good safety for Pitt in the long run. And I think they've got good depth at that position, maybe better than anywhere else in the team with guys like Eric Hallett. Um, DeMar Hamlin can play both spots. Uh, I, Judson Tallender has, is a pretty big and, and physical guy that can play in there. And from what I've seen on his special teams work, Buddy Mack, a true freshman, seems like he's going to be a player. So I think they've got a lot of depth there. I, I don't think – um, listen, not, are any of them as good as Paris Ford? No, but you don't need to have a Paris Ford to have a solid defense. I mean, they're, they're going to lose some playmaking. I think the fumbles forced that he did last year, he had three interceptions already this year. That kind of splash play, maybe you're not going to get. But I think they can do the job of playing safety in this defense without Paris Ford. I just think the, like you said, the keeping their head up, the emotional toll of all of these sort of bad things, whether it was the narrow losses or just getting embarrassed by Notre Dame and and now not having Pickett and not having Ford. I think that's the biggest job of this coaching staff the rest of the way is keeping these guys engaged. And let's be honest, that's a job that this coaching staff is probably doing for their job because yeah. if they go out here and they don't win another game, I mean, like I, I've been – fairly skeptical that in the middle of a pandemic Pitt is going to pull the trigger on, on firing a coach with four years left on his contract, sort of regardless of what happens on the field. But man, three wins would, would be, <laughs> if that doesn't get them there, it's going to get them awfully close. So they've got to find a way to keep this group engaged and come up with a positive for the rest of the season. If they're, if they're going to continue to be Pitt's coaches. Yeah. If there's anything that can, um, they still have uh, winning wise. I, obviously, there's not le much left to play for. They're not going to be playing in any uh, ACC championship game. But I think they have enough important players on this team, uh, young players on this team that could develop into core players that are still going to have their heads in it. Like I said, I, I think the vet, the juniors and seniors might be difficult, but I think they have enough core players here with. Uh, between Jordan Addison, some of the receivers, some of the guys on defense, uh, Servacier Dennis, some all the depth they have at the defensive line. I think uh, uh, this might be an opportunity for a guy like Rashad Battle, who's played mostly special teams. Maybe they could find a way to get him in some uh, uh, in, in, into some of their defensive packages late in the season. So I, I think that, that there'll be an opportunity for some individual players to play well. And as you mentioned, the coaching staff are going to try to be coaching their butts off because uh, I, I I think jobs are on the line. I, I don't know if Pat Narduzzi's job's on the line. I think it could be, but that, that remains to be seen. But I, I don't think there's any question. Uh, every member of the assistant coaching staff, uh, aside from maybe a couple guys, uh, probably aren't real secure about where they will be coaching next year. So there, there's still enough in here to, to play for, so uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, and I think the one thing you can say about this coaching staff is they've kind of done that, right? I mean, they had some crippling losses in 2016, and then they came back to beat Clemson when everybody had kind of written them off. Uh, in 2000, was it 2017? They, they lose two quarterbacks, and then they go to Kenny Pickett as a freshman, and they beat Miami kind of out of nowhere at the end of the year. 
they need something to be that spark, though. They've had this bye week. Um, I don't know what it's going to be, but they've really got to come up with something that's maybe going to get this running game going or maybe just locking things down on defense. This is not a dynamic Florida State offense. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, this should be a game where Pitt should be thinking about a shutout, Paris Ford or no. They have enough talent on the defense to do it, but they have not put up the kind of dominate – performance that we really thought would see from this defense this year too many penalties too many leaky plays and pass coverage that have gone for big gains against them so maybe it's that I don't know but I think they've got to find something to latch onto and get some positives because if it's another negative this week against what is frankly a bad Florida State team boy I just have a hard time thinking there's any recovery from that yeah I think it's going to have to come from the offense I I think a lot is going to be told uh, on what happens in the first quarter in the first, you know, in, in, in this first half. If the offense comes out again and has a problem scoring points, moving the football, and it's all being placed on the defense to keep them in the game, that's just a bad thing. Uh, this is a Florida State defense that Pitt should be able to uh, – I still, I, I don't care what had. I think they have enough playmakers. It's just a matter of getting something to happen. I think if they score uh, a couple, a couple few touchdowns in the first two quarters, that could be something that you know changes their mindset and uh, you know brings some positive um, <clears throat> feelings on the sideline there. And I think it all has to start with the offense and, frankly, the offensive line and quarterback position. Yeah, and. Uh... You know, you never know what's going to happen, but uh, I really think that, man, like the, it so much hinges on this too because, uh, you know, you could start seeing impacts in other areas, right? You start to you start to look at an embarrassing um, record and like three and four is not where Pitt wanted to be, but it does not guarantee an embarrassing end of season mark by any stretch of the imagination. But you get there, are guys going to stay engaged with the COVID protocols? What's going to happen with this recruiting class, number 32nd in the country, if, if Pitt starts losing some games that really shouldn't lose and, and really, you know, the things start to get lopsided on them, well, will they lose some recruits? And I just think there's so much still riding on um, keeping this team engaged and staying in the season, a critically important game this Saturday against the Seminoles. And as Pat Narduzzi said today, no Kenny Pickett again. Uh, or, well, he doesn't say in, in absolutes, but he's not running right now. So if you're not running on Monday, I have a really hard time seeing you play on Saturday. Uh, anything else, Mike, uh, before we wrap it up here? Uh, that, that, I, you hit on something at the end, Alan, and as you uh, see with, uh, you know, we both see the traffic on our site as far as the attention Pat Narduzzi is getting. And it's not surprising. <laughs> yeah, it's not surprising that uh, – He's not getting a lot of uh, love from the pit uh, fan base. However, I, I do have to keep bringing this up because it's very important in that we talk about the recruiting class is uh, improving, uh, at least statistically, uh, the eyeball test. This whole, uh, most of the fan base wants his coaching staff, a lot of it gone. But they have to be careful what they wish for when they do that, because the moment you you get rid of these coaches, depending if it happens, you get rid of the head coach. I would this this recruiting class is gone then. So, do they want the coaching staff gone to the point where they'd be willing to give up guys like Elliot Donald, Nakai Johnson, uh, the two backs from Virginia, all those guys? Is is it that important? If it is, then okay. But don't expect um, to get rid of this coaching staff or a lot of the members of the coaching staff and still maintain uh, these uh, commitments from these players because that's not going to happen. Both things, both things cannot happen. So uh, I think they have to keep that. I, I don't think enough of them are considering that uh, when airing their frustration about the coaching staff and you guys need to get fired. Uh, there's two things that can happen with that, you know, and one of them I don't think they think would be good. Yeah, and to, to add to that, uh, all these players have an additional year and they're all getting a free transfer, courtesy of the NCAA. You could fire a coach and have no team uh, very in, in very short yeah. order. 
uh, no team at all. And look, I mean, uh, can you let that hold yourself back if you really think that Pat Narduzzi is not the answer and you think you can financially and just in the marketplace go find a coach that is? Probably not. But, man, I just think it makes it awfully tough to – put. And, and the other thing is, you know, it's not like Pat Narduzzi was on the hot seat coming into this season. And you kind of have to take everything that happens in this COVID year with a, with a bit of a grain of salt, you know. I don't think that anything has happened the way everybody thought it was going to this season. I mean, look at just look what happened with Clemson and Boston College. Yeah, they come away with a win this week. But, I mean, I, I don't know, just a, in a crazy mixed-up world, are you going to fire a guy who you were really happy having as your head coach in August – because of uh, a couple results this fall and, and lose all the, the, the what you're talking about. I, I don't know. It, it's a, it's a big decision. Um, that's why Heather Light gets paid to be the athletic director. But I think that is probably a decision that would be best uh, to wait. I'll be honest. I, I, I think maybe, you know, you can argue that, that the time is there. Um, but I think the other stuff, the money, the, the recruiting class, the transfers, and what it would, what this this team might look like without Pat Narduzzi as a head coach going forward, it's pretty scary, and uh, and, and I think that's going to play a big factor as well. Yep. Uh, so, find out what happens this Saturday and big recruiting decision Saturday. Derek Davis will be making a decision. That would be pretty large if Pitt pulls the upset with that. I don't expect that to happen, but you never know. And uh, before we know it, a couple of weeks, we got uh, Pitt basketball starting here. So in Duquesne basketball. So we have uh, uh, plenty going on tap here. All right. Thanks, uh, Mike Vakov, Ken, Alan Saunders. Thanks to our sponsors at Buell Insurance Agency, as always. And thanks for watching another episode of Pitt Panther Talk on Pittsburgh Sports Now. Have a great day.